Last week, we learned probability. This week, we need to learn conditional probability. This might sound scary, but it's very similar to the probability we already know. We even use the same formula, number of desired outcomes over number of possible total outcomes. The only difference is we need to be more careful about defining what are the desired outcomes and what are the total possible outcomes. Conditional probabilities ask us something to the effect of, if we know A, what is the probability of B? Now, I understand this language might be a little confusing, so let's apply it and make sense of it with a similar problem to what we saw last week, but with a different kind of question. A survey asks Brown University students in the first week of school how they would describe their personal style, choosing from hipster, preppy, punk, or other. Their results are then sorted by class year and reported in the table below. Based on the table, what is the probability of a random senior from Brown identifying as hipster? And this is the same problem that we did last week, except now, instead of choosing a random student and asking the probability that they are hipster, now we are choosing someone we know is a senior and asking, if we know she is a senior, what then is the probability that she is hipster? So you see how it's a different question in the sense that now this is a conditional probability. Like I said before, we can use the same formula from probability, number of desired outcomes over number of possible total outcomes. Only, we need to redefine our outcomes as those where the student is a senior. Now we define our number of desired outcomes as those where they are both hipster and senior. So we look at the intersection of hipster and senior and find that there are 65 events. So, now we look to the number of total outcomes. Remember, we can only define outcomes as those where the student is senior. So that would mean all of the seniors only are the total outcomes. Looking to our table, that's 204. Now we can substitute this into our equation, evaluate, and we find our probability, 0.318 or 31.8%. Okay, we're just about done. There's only one more problem I'm going to throw at you. This kind of problem doesn't come up too often on the SAT, but I also wanted to show it to you because it gives you a stronger intuition and understanding for what probabilities really are and represent. Now, fair warning, it's a little bit hard for what you might expect to see in the SAT, so don't feel too intimidated. A square of area 2a squared is inscribed within a circle of area pi a squared, as shown below. If you were to throw a dart randomly somewhere in the circle, what is the probability it would land inside the square? These problems don't fit nicely into our probability formula. In the problem, we were given no number of events that we can use. So what do we do? We have to redefine our notion and understanding of probability as a ratio of desired outcomes to possible outcomes. This is clearly seen here, in which I've secretly removed the number signs because we don't have numbers in this problem. So we need to redefine a way to find numbers associated with the desired outcomes and the total outcomes. Let's try to be a little creative and try to reason this out. We need to find a way to quantify the desired outcomes of hitting the square and the possible outcomes of hitting the circle. Now, these are all points on a two-dimensional surface. We don't really have a way to quantify them that we think of. But how do we quantify the number of points on a two-dimensional surface? We call that area. So we can use area creatively to define this ratio of probability of desired outcomes to total possible outcomes. Our formula for probability now becomes the area of desired outcomes, which is the square, and the area of total outcomes, which is the circle. So just putting that a little more concisely, we have the area of the square over the area of the circle, and that is our definition, our new definition, for our probability in this case. Now, the problem if we were to see this on the SAT would probably ask us to calculate those areas, but we'll be doing geometry later, so fortunately the numbers are given to us, and we just need to plug in. When we plug in, we evaluate that our ratio, our probability, just becomes 2 over pi. And that there is our final answer. And we're done. The last couple of weeks, we've learned probability, conditional probability, as well as ways to apply these concepts to data tables, area problems, all kinds of different things. These are not only really important for the SAT, but great skills to know for other things as well. So good job for getting started now. Hope you liked the video. If you want to hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe and see a new video coming out from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!